Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the uh, show. Today is Monday, June 10th, 2019, and I'm glad to have all you guys here. Now, we're going to get the show started. We're going to open up the charts right here, and we're going to take a look at gold first. Uh, here's the thing. We've seen a little price drop of $11.80. Well, you know, I'm expecting something to happen right now. We're, we're starting to head into this recession. We're actually, I believe we're already in it. I think we've been in it for a couple months now or maybe a month or two. Uh, here's the thing. They're not going to declare it officially until we get two negative quarters of GDP growth. Uh, so it might be a, a, a while now. I mean, two quarters is, is six months from now before they actually, or, or even longer, before they even declare that it's a recession. But that doesn't mean we're not in a recession. I believe the recession's already started, and I, I think it's a global recession. And to find precedent for gold, because we're looking at gold price drop, and we're going to have to go back, and we're going to have to take a look at the, the historical gold price. And what I want to point out to you guys is the last recession, using that as an indicator. Now, you can't quite completely use the last recession as an indicator, but in, on this chart, you can see... Shaded in gray is the last recession. And what you notice is the gold price was rising. It's like 800, and then it was 900, and then it was 1,000, and then it went all the way up to $1,159 before the, the, the beginning of the last recession. Now, when the recession started to take hold and calamity started to hurt, it started to really hit home, what we actually seen happen was we seen a falling gold price. The deflation that was created by the last recession was extremely powerful deflation, and it deflated the gold price. And we, we see it went all the way down at, at a really low. It was eight, like $862 on October of 2008. And, you know, when the recession was just beginning in March of 2008, it was $1,159. So we saw a drop from $1,159 all the way down to $862. But you have to realize something. There was a difference. Gold was on a, a really on a big uptick here leading into the last recession. Whereas this time, gold price, as you can see, has been depressed all along. It's been basically, basically it's been going sideways ever since going back to June of 2013. So from 2013 till now, it's only been going sideways. They were, on the start of the last recession, we were on, we were on a bull tear charge going up in price. And then when the recession struck, the price fell quite significantly. This time, I do expect the price during the, the front edge of the recession that the price of gold will probably drop somewhat on the front edge of the recession, but I don't expect it to drop as significantly as it did last time on the front edge of the last recession. And there's a number of factors and reasons why. One, one is, look at this rise in gold price before the fall. That helped exacerbate the fall off and made it a little bit steeper and sharper. Plus, there's a tremendous amount of, of deflation coming in very quickly during the start. In fact, the system almost melted down. This time, we're under a little bit different circumstances this time. But I am expecting the gold price possibly to cool down. Uh, I, could, I could, in my mind, I can probably see it dropping down and back down into the 1200s. Uh, during the initial phase of this recession. Now, you notice these gray lines right here the beginning and ending of the recession of 2008. Well, we're already into this gray line already. It probably started uh, back around maybe May or something, you know, and, and we're already into it. It's just that they haven't, they haven't put it yet because they haven't declared the recession yet. But it's already on, ongoing, the recession. We see a remarkable drop-off in, in many sectors, and in, in not just one economy but in many economies around the earth you know and we're already well into it and so we're seeing these this downward pressure on gold you know and it'll probably continue until the turnaround part of the of the whole thing which is when the fed 
actually does change monetary policy. Up till now, it's all been talk. They haven't done anything yet. Now, we're going to move on and we're going to look at more stuff that's going on in the world. That's the gold price. The silver price today is 1473. It's down 24 cents on the day. And if we go back to the silver price, the gold price, we can see it's 1328 uh, and it's down $11.60. Don't be depressed about this. If you're holding gold or silver, if you're a bag holder, do not be depressed. And don't, don't sell your silver or gold because they're trying to shake you out. You know, this whole thing is has been one huge, ever since going back to 2013, it's been one huge shakeout. But in the end, this thing's going to turn around. Uh, when the Fed turns around on their monetary policy and they really start to get interest rates that back down near zero and they stop quantitative tightening completely and they probably implement new forms of of monetary stimulus that's when gold's going to turn and we're going to be see a bull rally that's going to take us past the old highs of nineteen hundred dollars this time and the same thing with silver uh let's take a look now at bitcoin bitcoin has been going along sideways for the last little bit actually a little bit of downward pressure but uh this is only temporary we're looking at a price of seventeen hundred and eleven dollars today um up 2.25% on the day for Bitcoin. Uh, let's take a look at cryptocurrency market capitalizations. And today, basically, we're seeing $254 billion. Let me refresh the page. $253.7 billion with Bitcoin dominance of 55.7%. We're seeing a major move in Litecoin. Um, Litecoin is $125.37. So Litecoin is one of the few coins that are up big you know, right today, you know. Um, XRP is depreciated a little bit back below 40 cents, 39.8 cents. Ethereum's $243 and Bitcoin Cash is $394. EOS is $6.41. Binance Coin is $31.58. Bitcoin SV is $189. Bucks. Stellar is $12.3 cents. Uh, Cardano is $8.3 cents. Tron is 3.1 cents and Monero is $86.40 and Dash is $147.19 and IOTA is 42 cents. Uh, I think I'll end it about there. Maybe we'll do Cosmos too. It's $6.08. Uh, these are the top coins today and that's what they're doing. Now let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Let's refresh the page. Uh, she's up again 170 points. Uh, this rally has everything to do with the Fed has promised to lower interest rates. What is this market going to do if this next Fed meeting, they don't lower interest rates? And I tell you the truth, I'm not so sure they will. Uh, they've been head faking us for quite a little while now. Uh, telling us that they're going to lower interest rates and that they're not going to raise rates anymore and telling us first telling us they're not going to raise rates anymore then telling us that perhaps uh, perhaps they always qualify it they never come out and say okay we're going to lower rates they just say perhaps we will lower rates but they they lead you on and they've been head faking us all along and they've been controlling this market through just words not actions now How's the market going to react if they're expecting, and they've already priced in a rate cut. Right now, they've priced in a rate cut, and they don't get their rate cut. That the Fed is just jawboning us the whole time. Well, there, there could be a, a, a tantrum in the markets. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, crude oil. $54.29 on the day. <coughs> It's up 30 cents, a half a percentage point. Uh, let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries today. <clears throat> and we're seeing yields rising all the way across the board. But I've been noticing that. <clears throat> what we get, we get a day of yields rising. And then the very next day it comes in and the yields fall substantially again. We've been going through this. 
It's like one step forward, two steps back. One step forward, two steps back. And we've been doing this all the way through this yield curve inversion. The yield curve inversion keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Um, now, tomorrow, we might see these rates drop. Here's the thing. It's like a, it's like a sawtooth motion, you know, up and down, up and down. But the, the overall, uh, yields have been falling more than they've been going up. And, uh, you know, falling substantially. And uh, so we get this one day up. To me, this is indicative of, of, of day on, day off buying of these treasuries. And, and we're in this bull treasury market, you know. Uh, we could get a snapback in this thing. Let's take a look now at uh, the U.S. dollar index. 96.78 in the U.S. dollar index. Uh, and the dollar has very risen a little bit today. It's risen a, a quarter. Uh, it's it's getting up toward 97 today. Its its tendency today is is slowly climbing, but not very fast. Now let's take a look at. Uh, at this article here about shale oil. A gusher of red ink for U.S. shale. You know, United States oil production, if it drops off, this could be another devastating effect to intensify this uh, growing recession that's already uh, happening right now, you know. And these shale oil producers, they need a lot, lot more money for the royal than they do in Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia, Saudi oil, it's a lot cheaper for them to get it out of the ground. Uh, shale oil is basically, getting down to the nitty gritty of it, these shale oil guys, they go out there in these shale oil fields and they're digging where the old oil used to be in giant pools. They sucked all that out but way back in the 20th century in, in, in 18 and 1900s. They sucked all that out. You know, these big oil magnets sucked all that oil out of the ground. It come bubbling out of the ground, you know. That's originally, it's big pools down there. Sucked all that out. What's left down in there is oil that's sticking to the rocks and stuff. Basically, shale oil production, they go down in there and they, they pump hot water and everything in and hot steam and everything else, and they loosen up that oil and they get it coming again. They're, they're basically cleaning out the bottom of the pot. It's basically what they're doing, but it costs a lot. They're cleaning out the bottom of the pot. It's non-sustainable for the long term. Shale oil production is non-sustainable for the long term. It's good for a couple years, big bag, boom, bang, and, and all of this oil for a couple years, the shale oil, but then it starts to have to keep moving on to new wells, new wells, new wells. And they call that the Red Queen. That's the name for it. The fact that they have to keep chasing these new wells. And they need new money to come in to drill, keep drilling these wells, you know, and everything. And like it says right here, there's a gusher of red ink for U.S. Red, US shale oil production. So what they have to do in order to get this new funding from the banks and stuff, they have to over-exaggerate the amount of oil that's there. This is a common practice in the oil industry, is to over-exaggerate how much oil is in a field or whatever so they'll get funding so they can go out and get what's there you know what i mean they're not going to go to the bank and say oh uh there's a, only a minuscule oil amount of oil there and we're probably going to lose money the bank say oh we're not going to lend you any money no they're going to go in there and tell them oh there's enough oil to last the next 200 years in this new oil field you know exaggerate and, and that way the bank says, well, you know, okay, we see profits too, and here's the money. And then, I mean, I'm just cutting it to the, the, to the chase of what they do, you know, but they're constantly chasing their tail. And this is called the Red Queen. They're constantly having to put in these new wells because the old ones quit, you know, or they have to go down and repressurize them and everything, which costs a lot of money, you know. So shale oil production is, is a quick fix to the to the oil on the earth and the oil the amount of oil that's used every day is a set amount for the earth if they produce more than that set amount that the earth uses every day then the price drops rather significantly if they produce slightly less than the world uses every day you know 
then the price rises significantly. So oil price is determined by production, the amount of production keeping up with demand. And they watch that very carefully. If they get a little bit of an overproduction, the oil price drops. If they get a little bit of an under underproduction and tanks start to go down, you know, then they raise the price, you know, and the price is all determined by that. And so this U.S. shale oil production is the reason why oil right now is only fifty dollars, fifty, a little bit over fifty dollars a barrel. That's a low oil price, you know. Anyway. Let's take a look at the German bank. We'll end the show with the German bank, Deutsche Bank. Deutsche Bank, you know, they're right down on the bottom right now. They could fail at any time. They could fail in an hour. It's just a sudden drop in the, 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 the share prices just take take it down to zero or practically zero in, in, in an hour. And nobody's going to touch it, you know. And it, it, once it starts really dropping like that, it's it, I mean, it's just failure. They could go into failure at any time at this point. This is a bad situation. And what would the fallout be from Deutsche Bank? Well, nobody can tell you for sure. But I think the financial system will will manage to get by and will manage. If Deutsche Bank goes down, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. I think that the financial system can absorb it. Uh, but it will cause an awful... if it go, If it does go down, say this week or next week or however long they can last uh, until they do go down. When it does go down, it's going to create an awful lot of, of uh, fear through the financial system and an awful lot of like a panicky situation. So, so this is a bit of a wild card within the financial system, Deutsche Bank. Uh, and nobody's paying much attention to it, but you know she slid right down to rock bottom right now, and she's ready. To, she's ready to fall. So we got to keep our eye on that. Listen, thank you guys for listening to this show. Give me a thumbs up, and uh, we'll catch you uh, very soon again. Uh, bye bye, guys. <laughs>